Hello everybody, it is Dante here. I am a bit nervous making this video, but I think it's just going to flow perfectly anyway. This could be a vlog, maybe it is a world travel vlog, even though I am still... Uh, now I'm back in my own country, I am traveling nonetheless, and I'm in Portland, Oregon right now. I just got back from a week-long gathering of radical fairies in southern Oregon, which was really beautiful and such a, probably my best gathering ever, and a really deeply healing experience, and it's like a big pivot point in my life. Um, so I want to share about my experience returning to the United States, which has been really challenging, and what I've been integrating and experiencing in these past two months as the traveling continues um, in a much more familiar place, but nonetheless uh, I think these are fun videos to make and there's a lot of deeper things to share uh, in this one. So I'm... here I am. <laughs> I, I felt a lot of anxiety coming back to the United States, which, which is a pretty common experience for me. And part of it is just the returning to the sense of the bigger responsibilities and projects that I want to bring into manifestation that are now on the forefront when I'm back here and not on this big year-long experience around the world. And part of it is also this country, this culture, the amount of time people have to work, which is beyond many other places, the um, sort of aggression, um, the violence that exists here that isn't prevalent in a lot of the places that I've been, uh, the attitude, the sort of critique that is very common in so many people's mindsets, and the uh, pretty much, you know, constant surge of addictive substances or screens or all of these things that flow in. And I really felt overwhelmed by all of this energy and information and um, having m le less time traveling and being in the moment in new places, more time to sit and screen and I really wanted to get a lot of things done and my first couple of weeks I did in Pennsylvania, I kind of plowed through a lot of creative works and things for my online platforms and then I just kind of got to this stuck place and the stuck place continued with me as I came over into Washington state and I was called to Seattle um, for a variety of reasons I was you know weighing out the options in my mind is this summer a west coast thing or is this a Europe thing I have friends all around the world I've been traveling for 10 years I have an online platform that's continuing to reach new people and so for this reason I get invitations and opportunities to go so many different places and the um, I wouldn't call it a problem it's just a decision experience that I have to make all the time of okay well which of all of these pathways are open that are open to me is the pathway that's really calling to me and the pathway that I'm about to take and so those were my decisions was West Coast or Europe for the summer and I haven't been out here in four years and I have a lot of dear friends out here and it's really like a homecoming in a way um, but first I went to Seattle and a friend offered to let me house sit for her and there was also somebody I've been chatting with on one of these gay dating apps that I was very excited to meet we've had a conversation for months and I don't really do that with people that are that far away or even with people that are in front of me um, if we are going to explore something let's just chat in person I don't like the screen and um, so that brought me there and it sent me into this kind of experience of being a little bit very challenged after a great first date and then okay this person isn't texting back for several days and I come to experience this boom um, this grief and anxiety and fear from all of these other times that I've been rejected and put in situations like this all of these series of really bad uh, exes or short-lived things or rejections um, from the time I was really 17 till now that's what what is that um, 14 years or something half almost half my life 
Um, I feel like I've never really gotten into this relationship that felt comfortable, that eased my nervous system, that there was this mutual trust and good connection. And it brings me to often react in these really intense ways when I am experiencing rejection or something that I don't really like in the context of a relationship. I feel the person pulling away, but I myself am very attached. And um, that had me just messy for a week and texting this person when I should have been tuning in with myself. And um, obviously that's not helping that relationship form either when I'm in my discoherent, discombobulated um, nervous system state. And yet at the same time, this was kind of a moment for me where I'm starting to, I'm seeing images of the Buddha in my mind's eye. I'm seeing this, these flashbacks to temples that I was in in Thailand and Cambodia and Bali, these Buddhist temples, and remembering these tenets that um, attachment to desire is the cause of suffering. And uh, I was just feeling this, this deep, deep call in a way and so when my friend invited me to come to a solstice meditation with her and her mother at seven in the morning very early for me six in the morning um, I was like yes I'm all about it and we meditated for an hour which is the first time I've done this kind of mindfulness um, Vipassana style meditation for that long in many years and then afterwards she did this very deep um, nervous system clearing, body work modality that's a very new modality that I think is going to become very popular in the future and is something that now I want to study and explore more. And it just took me from a place where I was in this really deep state of nervous system tension to in this state of really expansive openness and connection um, within two hours and there was crying and shaking and all of these different ways of the body releasing um, and from that point forward I started meditating every day starting with a half hour adding five minutes every day until I'm at an hour then adding my hour-long yoga practice on top of that after the meditation which is so different than doing a meditation after the yoga practice and it's much better for me because now that I meditate before the yoga practice I'm noticing that I am more mindful and aware of how I'm doing the yoga postures and there's no more of this overstretching or doing things that are causing me to exert myself and hurt myself, um, which was a question of mine of was this yoga practice of all of these years really helping me if I'm overstretching and I'm pushing my own limits and then causing myself injuries. But what I did note is that there's something that is different because now, um, now that I'm practicing trying to sit for hours at a time in cross-legged meditation, I notice that I don't really have to move that much. And this is actually the point of yoga, um, for those who aren't aware, is that the um, asana is just having a proper seat. And the, the postures that we do are meant to bring us to have a proper seated position for long and deep meditation. And in that sense, all of this practice has paid off, even though I haven't been as aware as I needed to be in my 11 years of yoga journeying. Um, these deep meditations really change something and I noticed that how you know it's really crazy to me how quickly I went from a state of ooh, shaky to a state of being wow I'm so relaxed and there's triggers coming but I'm not responding in the same way and I don't know I think that at points in this journey, I thought that, well, when you get to a certain level, you just maintain that level because it's like you're walking upwards. But really what we're doing is we're training our brain, we're putting our brain into different states of consciousness every single day. And so we can't, you know, do years of this and then, um, you know, think that we can go back to things that dysregulate our nervous system and change our brain waves and the way our brain works in a negative way just you know for a little while and then it's all gonna be okay it's like it's but at the same time when we have done this work in the past and we have know what it's like to sit through these deeper meditations and experiences it's so incredible how quickly we can revert back into more relaxed more open
more balanced state. Um, so integrating, integrating a lot and hold on a pause. Though it isn't just meditation that makes these big changes, it's a complete change of thought, a complete change of how to live a daily life. And I'm, I went off the screen while I was at the Radical Fairy Gathering and just living completely in the moment, in nature. Um, about a hundred people in the woods, all gay men mostly, and more spiritually oriented, open beings who want to connect in a deeper way and live as a community and be immersed in nature with a beautiful creek right next to our barn kitchen and uh, acres to explore and beautiful heat, beautiful people. And I, it's so hard coming back from these experiences because I think we are all, ought to be living that way all the time in nature and with each other instead of having these isolated existences which lead us into deep addiction. Um, addiction causes us to isolate but addiction is also a solution for when we're already isolated and in this world where they demand us to work so much and take care of all of these things and we're expected to have all of these different amenities in our life um, all, on, all for ourselves, all on our own, we do become very isolated and disconnected. And so it is only this deep total change of lifestyle that brings about this thing. And I realized on my own path that as, you know, I've been doing this work for so many years and all of it was always motivated by spiritual growth. And I really just wanted more than anything else to awaken and to heal and to have community, a partner, these things that are a part of like a balanced conscious life, in my opinion as well. And also um, then 2020 comes in and there is this big opening for me where I'm, my YouTube channel is not going to, you know, I'm not at 100k subscribers or anything, but um, all of my social media, less YouTube than the others, went in a very big upward movement and it was amazing that I could support myself even more, but then it brought about this shift that I didn't even see myself falling into because I'm still working in esoteric and spiritual fields. It's like, okay, that's still the focus, but I didn't see the intensity of the energy of ambition that came in. And I'm working now on releasing this ambition and recognizing that the point of everything I'm doing is spiritual growth. That's the spiritual growth of humanity. And my part of that spiritual growth is my own spiritual growth. And that's why I'm here. So I, another pause, need another breath in. I mean, we need to pause the video this time, just taking a breath in. And that's really what I'm doing. And and that's why showing up vulnerably, vulnerably on these platforms is such a big and important thing that I have always wanted to stand for because it's our own process of transformation and showing up for that as clearly as we can that leads us to be the best examples of that process of growth and transformation for others as well. And. not easy down here and I know there's a much larger portion of my audience that is queer but mm, the majority of it isn't like the majority of the world and they don't really understand how hard our lives are and this video isn't just about that but I have to say that so that you can open your mind to that idea as you bring in this information longer pause hold on and this is especially true for those on... Sorry, I got really interrupted, but continuing, uh, I'd say that also to be gay and more spiritually inclined is 
also very challenging because there's not many who are. Um, the fairy community is the biggest ex group of spiritually oriented queer people that I've ever met, but that's a pretty small community given how big the queer community is. And even within this community, I often sense that there's a lot less people that have the complete dedication to the path that I aspire to um, and I intend to bring about. So backtracking a bit that this ambition thing is part of what has brought me to be so much on social media so much at the time and it became really tricky because I have always been wanting to post something and now the idea the idea has been now post every day and post different sorts of things to engage all sorts of different people every day and it brought me the habit of just opening the Facebook, opening Instagram, da, 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 da. and and so I even do this when I don't feel creative, when I don't feel in the flow, when I don't feel like sharing. And then I end up scrolling, and then I end up taking in all of this other distracting information. And part of my uh, process has also been switching my screen time to do less of these mind-melting um, scrolling adventures of this and going back to researching different things about attention, memory, um, the brain, meditation, and um, how social media and other addictions and all of these things influences this brain device. And that really also, you know, having that background was and taking in that information regularly really helped me to understand why the changes that I was making was really important. And I got back yesterday. I left around um, over 24 hours ago. And on the car ride, I just didn't look at the phone because I wasn't ready. Um, I've been really now doing this wonderful practice um, beyond the so it the foundation is this mindfulness meditation the awareness in the body and just breathing and paying attention to the sensations paying attention to the feelings and letting the mind drift away from dr take its focus away from those thoughts and it was so funny like a couple weeks ago i when I was starting to feel this call, like, I need to meditate more, I need to meditate more, I need to get back into this flow, I need to get back into this state that I remember. I sat down to meditate, and then I was starting to visualize something for a couple of minutes. I was st starting to focus on my breath for a minute or two. I was starting to think a mantra for, and then I was like, wait, what? I have learned almost hundreds of different meditation techniques from visualizing this, uh, these mantras, um, focus on that. You know, there's, there's so many techniques out there from all of the different um, religions or spiritual teachings, from all of the different channeled beings to meditations that my guides themselves have taught me and blah, 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 blah. There's so much that I've practiced. And so it was so funny to get to a place where I realized Oh, I want to meditate, but I don't even know where to start because there's so many other... I've been doing so many kinds of meditation. Which one do I need? And then falling back into this mindfulness meditation practice has been so grounding. Um, one teacher I was working with was saying that this is the best meditation for the nervous system. Um, and it just felt so right and so centering and I also noticed through this that just by br bringing awareness into these areas where there's tension there's so much more growth and so much more release from that pain and those sore spots then came from trying to stretch it out with yoga and trying to combat it um, and I see in such a deeper way now that these patterns of tension in the body are 
mostly mental. We do need to adjust them with the asanas and body work and all of this to kind of create the form for that. But why they're there is some nervous system emotional pattern. And by these practices of meditation, things release. And it's really, really uh, amazing. And I feel like I feel a strong desire to maintain this and I feel a very strong sense that as I do maintain these practices, really big things are going to shift. And this isn't a movement away from channeling per se, but it is making a space to get clear of some of the stuff that comes with channeling, which is often a lot of mind stuff. And I see a lot of people in those communities in particular that get obsessed with different ideas that they learn from channeled beings. And in doing that, they, you know, they're constantly in story mode. And story is a very shamanic thing and shamanic path and an important part of our lives. It helps us to understand deeper meaning in things and understand how we create those meanings and understand our inner archetypes and so many, so many things. Yet at the same time, to go beyond the stories and to go simply to the direct experience is something that cannot be replaced and I'm recognizing it as a deep foundation for me. Pause. There's so much more that I could include and is on my mind, but I want to include only the most important details. The other bit is that this gathering really helped me to deepen into intimacy with other men, and I had a lot of good experiences, and I saw a lot of where some of my own resistances were, and yeah, I mean, there's so much work to be done in that level. Um, though I was in a place where I really was allowed to be so much more honest about where I was at and where I was feeling um, with many people who are very sort of aware of communication, consent, connection, and energy flows. Um, and as I've expressed sometimes on Facebook, Instagram, whoever, that there's this deep feeling of, ooh, um, I need, I've been so lonely for so long, a partner in my life would be amazing. Um, and I still want that, though I also feel both um, that just being in the presence of conscious gay community fills a bit of that space for me because I don't feel as alone. And also that on a certain level, how difficult it is to find such a compatible person makes me recognize what my priorities really ought to be. Um, in this gathering of a hundred people, there's some people that I have a little crush on and there's some people that I have sharing of intimacy with that feels really healthy, but I'm not really in love or anywhere close to that. Um, take something very special to really pull me in and historically when that happens, it's really challenging because there's this attachment system and all of these things from the past that reactivate. But I feel like the tools that I have, um, and I'm not even sharing all of the tools that have been supporting me in this process in this video because again it would be too long, but there's been a lot that's been coming to me that's been helping break down some of these barriers. And at the same time, I still do feel like it is a really difficult thing as a being who's so unique, who is somebody who's traveling all over the world and doesn't really have a, a home base or an intention to create one somebody who's really so dedicated to this path. And I think that's, you know, one of the other things that I feel like I need to share more of now is that I'm remembering or recognizing that I'm not, um, you know, in these Eastern spiritual traditions, there's a differentiation between somebody who has a monastic life and a lay person. And I um, feel a bit somewhere in between that 
like today I did four hours four, of yoga and meditation and I was making up for missing some practices I did the past I was doing the past couple of days um, I missed them the past couple of days rather so it took a little longer but to me um, three or four hours of doing these things every day ought to be normal and natural um, I feel like that's what I want and then I recognize for most people that doing this and having their regular lives and jobs wouldn't be possible. But for me, um, this, you know, doing these meditation practices and yoga and all of this was the foundation of how I opened to channel in the first place. It was by um, really dedicating myself fully into this realm that a gift that is an advanced gift that not doesn't come to everyone was able to open in me. And then I focus more on that, and again, as I said, the ambition got in. But what I recognize is that, for me, it isn't really about building something for myself as much as getting these teachings, getting this information, getting this idea out there for the world, getting in the right state of consciousness, and focusing all of my time on being in that. And I think it does involve that amount of dedication. And... I'm feeling so much more excited about the unknown than I was before. Um, I'm really, really glad I dropped into this before just jumping onto social media. I'm not going to lie, I still have a little bit of anxiety of what's going to happen when I open that Facebook um, page and start to take in all of the information again. But my intention is to step forward in this time being really discerning about how I engage and what I'm doing on these platforms and how that impacts my mind. and. Um, how it impacts my page as well but I think I've already been pretty well with that that I post what's important and I throw in a few funny and um, mostly spiritual memes to spice it up and this is how we're doing it anyway <laughs> thank you for watching I'm gonna end this video now um, and ending with that openness and that attitude of dedication and devotion to awakening to a higher level of consciousness and vibration, knowing it's possible, knowing we're doing it, and also that we can't do it alone. Um, and so the challenge that I'm still figuring out is that I am someone who loves like that natural conscious environment like the gathering I just came to but for most of the people who came there they came from the city for a week or even less than that and then, then they're going back to their city lives most of the gay community lives in bigger urban areas and I'm seeing how important that need you know um, I went all the way around the world and I really struggled some months into the trip because I was so disconnected from gay community and that made me feel very disconnected from myself and alone. It's something I deeply need. Um, whether I need a partner or not, I think that's another uh, thing to question, but I definitely need to be around my people. And at the same time, on the spiritual path and on my own path, I need to be somewhere more chill. And um, so that place back in Oaxaca in Mexico is where I meet the best of both worlds. But there's other issues there with housing and with chaotic energies. So this is part of why the travel never ends because all of the places I go only meet some of the needs and then as other needs go unmet, they inspire the desire to go and step off somewhere else. And maybe this continues forever, maybe it doesn't. Um, but I had I don't think some people understand the conundrum behind why I'm always on the move. Um, and yeah, it's, it is really fun and magical, but there is an inner challenge that is a huge motivation. Um, so I hope this inspires you in some way, and I hope that the uniqueness of my journey allows you to own the uniqueness of your journey. I hope that the insight I share allows you to find insight in your own way. And I hope that your heart stays open, brilliant, and radiant today and every day. So thanks again, DanteStarshine.com. I'm available for channeling sessions, astrology readings, coaching sessions, and something else too, probably. Hope you have a really brilliant day, and catch you next time.